So that mixture will boil when the vapor pressure of that mixture is equal to what? Atmospheric, Atmospheric pressure. pressure. What am I putting in? Steam. Eh? Steam. So when will the liquid start to boil? The mixture. Inside the pressure. When inside. the vapor pressure of the mixture equals the steam. Vapor pressure of the steam. Steam. Inside. And the vapor pressure of the steam is equal to the when will this boil? Remember the water that is in the steam can is boiling. When when will it boil? When the vapor pressure of the water in the can is equal to the atmospheric pressure. And what are you pushing in? Steam. Steam. And steam is what? Is it the same pressure of the atmosphere now? Yes. Yes? So what we are giving in is the steam that goes in and that steam is equal to the atmospheric pressure, that's why it was boiling. Then what you have to do is you have to find out the vapor pressure of stone wheel. Why? Because you got the vapor pressure of liquid uh, water which you will get from the literature. And because the steam is going in, the steam vapor pressure was equal to the atmospheric pressure. That's why it boiled. So if you know the atmospheric pressure, if you know the vapor pressure of water, can you find the vapor pressure of toluene? Under Dalton's law. See that Pp is equal to P1 plus P2. P2. So P1 is what? Vapor pressure of liquid uh, water and P2 will be vapor pressure of toluene. Does that make sense? You are passing steam because steam became, I mean, liquid water became steam because it matched the atmospheric pressure. That's why it was boiling and went into steam. So you are making the steam go in and boil the mixture. So what will happen when the liquid will, when the mixture will start to boil, it will not separate. Both of them will come out. Because according to Dalton's law, that Pp is equal to P1 plus P2. And in, when you are doing distillation, the difference is when you heat the mixture, both of them will boil. By the time it comes to the condenser, one of the liquid will condense and go back. The lowest boiling point liquid will come out. But in this case, you are not putting the condenser. You put, I mean, what you call the fractional uh, distillator. Distillation. Uh, then you have a condenser, right? What do you call that part? Remember, you have a round bottom part, you have a long one, and then you have a condenser. What do you call this part?
This one is? Go and find out. We've done this. So, in this experiment, we are going to use a condenser everything, but we won't use the long arm. So what will happen is that when the two uh, liquids in a mixture will start to boil, once you collect it, after some time, they will separate. So you will have a certain mass for the liquid one and certain mass for liquid two. Then you apply this formula. P1, V1, uh, sorry, PV is equal to NRT for gas one. And PV is equal to NRT for gas two. Right? Now when you go back to your lab manual and see the formula given there in your introduction. Introduction. <laughs> PV is equal to NRT. Is it there? Can you see that PP or P1 over P2 is equal to N1 over N2? Yes. Yeah. That means P1, you write the full form part of it. PV is equal to. And for P2, you write the full form. PV is equal to NRT. You don't write in the manual, you write in your book. Because in the manual, we might ask you to use it during your lab test. Eh? Oh no, we'll provide you another one. Can't trust eh? <laughs> so it. P1, B is equal to NRP, N1. And then P2, B is equal to N2, RP. R R is what? I hope you are listening to me. So R R is constant for both. Yes. P is constant for both. Yes. Can you get that formula? PV is equal to NRT is equal to PV is equal to NRT. Cross multiply, get the N this side and P this side. Get it? PV, P1, B is equal to N1, RT and P2, B is equal to NRT. Do the ratio. P1 over P2 is equal to N1 over N2. And in both the case, R is going to be same and T is going to be same. Can you explain N? N is what? Mass time? Mass divided by? Now you put this there. The place where it was N1, you put M over MR. So you expand the moment. Instead of writing N1, you write M1 over W1. Eh? W1 means molecular weight. And M means your mass. So your P1 over P2 is equal to what? M1 over W1 divided by over Right? See, it's so 
so simple. P1 over P2 is the same as N1 over N2. This N1 will be M1 over W1 divided by N2 over W2. Right? See, when my pen doesn't want to write on the board, he wants you to write. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Now I go back to the manual and see how we got the final equation there. Can you see how this experiment is based on Dalton's law now? That means the two gases will not interact. Both of them will behave ideally. We are applying steam so that the ratio in which the toluene and water distill will be equivalent to the ratio of the pressure. Remember, I did explain in the lecture Pt over, uh, sorry, P1 over Pt is same as N1 over Nt. Or P1 over P2 is equal to N1 over N2. That means the ratio in which the two liquids will be coming out is P1 over P2 is same as N1 over N2. So it will be difficult for us to go and measure the P1 and P2. But it will be easy for us to measure the weight of the mass of the liquid. So if you know the mass of the liquid, you should be able to calculate the MW, that is the molecular weight. And the pressure we are using here is the atmospheric pressure is equal to the vapor pressure of water plus the vapor pressure of the trick is when you start to distill the temperature will tend to fluctuate a little bit it will start from a certain temperature and then rise up then you will notice in the experiment that when you distillation starts the temperature will become fixed it won't change and you will be able to collect as much as you can. Then the temperature will go up. So can you see in the derivation of this formula, P1 over P2 is equal to N1 over N2, R is constant then, P is constant, which means you need to collect the fraction where the temperature is steady. You can't collect the fraction where the temperature was from 87 to 92. So where is your steady temperature? None, eh? You might come up to say 87 and the temperature will remain constant for some time. While distillation is happening. Collect that. Clear? And then as soon as you see that the temperature has started to go up, change your measuring cylinder and note that temperature. So what you will see is that you, will be, you have collected different fractions. You will work on the fraction on which the temperature was constant. Then the formula becomes very If you start collecting it from you know, the first time you start to distill it till the end, then you have a range of temperature. Eh? So in that formula, we can't cancel the temperature. We have to bring the temperature back. Get it? 
there is a quick in this experiment. All you have to do is just do all your distillation setup. Instead of heating your round bottom flask, you will be heating the can which is containing water and the tube goes into the three neck round bottom flask and we start boiling. Clear? Any question? If you are given this uh, experiment in the left test, you should be able to do that. Right? <laughs> and be careful, you should also know the skill part. Like last year, I gave them methanol and water and they did the full experiment. Experimental part was zero. Why? Because this technique only works for <laughs> So all the students have to write was this technique will not work on this system because this is a dissimilar system. So that reminded me of our early doctors nowadays. This is our students. Even if we don't have to get medicine, we mm -hmm. give you something. Mm -hmm. They have to show their mm -hmm. Just like the students came in, you have to know the theory part. Of it. Sometimes you don't do the experiment, you are lucky. So please remember, steam distillation uses Dalton's law. Why? Because according to Dalton's law, we are using the concept of ideal gas, which means the mixture of two gases do not mix. And the only way you can use them is use two invisible liquids and create the gas. You will be dealing with steam today, therefore, they sit back on, buttoned up, and if you are wearing anything short, then please be just careful in case the hot water spills out. Eh? You don't need to go and wear the gloves because we are dealing with water. Right? And you know what happens when your hot water goes inside the glove, it becomes very difficult to pull out. Eh? Mm -hmm. So be careful, these gloves are only meant for protection of minor <coughs> not heat. So make sure you be careful. We are using hot plate. Make sure the wire of the hot plate, the electrical wire, don't touch the hot plate because the painting of the wire is made from PVC and it will start to melt. And then the wire will get exposed. If you touch it, you will hold it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the uh, plastic uh, tubing that you have, make sure it doesn't touch the side of the hot plate because it will melt it. Right? Be careful. That's all I can say. It is over to nine now. If you go according to the way I've explained it, you should finish in around one hour. And if you are happy with your result, then you can start continuing. If not, then you put some back liquid into the can and you do the second. Okay? It's not hard, but the theory part is the important part. Start. Mm -hmm.